everybody, Backyard Bullion here. Now today we have some silver stamping to do and if we've got time some antiquing as well. These are the 25 5 ounce hammer finish silver forum rounds which I've just come back from the Edinburgh assay office and I'm really proud and happy with these. They're our flagship product for 2019 and I'm really thrilled with the way that they've come out. They're absolutely stunning. Now they're all but finished with the exception of some serial numbers which we're going to put on the reverse which is hammered as well in the middle and then just antiquing them. You can see here the difference between a plain and antiqued one and I hope you can appreciate that the antiquing really does bring out some incredible detail in the hammered finish, the text, the numbers and the hallmark as well. So lots to crack on with here today. Now if you have not seen these before uh, and you're interested in them, they are currently in a pre-order order period over on the Silver Forum. And uh, if you would like to get involved with this project, support the Silver Forum, support everything that we do here on the channel, then please feel free to head on over there. I'll put a link down in the description below. Now, we are going to be doing the serial numbers here on the reverse of these. So I'm going to start with our prototype, which is number one. And um, we've got here actually a hashtag symbol. So we're going to do hashtag 01 dash 25, so number one of 25. Uh, now, as with all of my stamping, this is all done kind of by free hand and eye, kind of eye coordination. So I hope we're gonna get the spacing all okay. Uh, I'm just gonna check that this is the right way up for a hashtag. I think this is correct. We'll, we'll find out anyway, so here we go. Now, very interestingly, with a piece that's already been hammered, because you're compressing the silver and pushing, the silver, you actually need a significant amount of or more force than you would if it was just a plain piece of silver, which I find fascinating. So it was something I was learning, in fact, something that the Edinburgh Assay Office had mentioned as well when applying the hallmark here, because all of this has been hammered already, there's you know, there's only so much compression of silver that you can do, and it has to the metal goes somewhere. So when you're pushing in these, you need quite a lot of force on them, apparently, which is something I did not necessarily appreciate, but it's still stamped just fine. And here we go with the first one. So we've got hashtag, and then we're going to go zero and one. And we've got here a nice big I from my slightly larger set, which will serve as a slash. Let's just make sure that's even. There we go, and then of 25. Now this is a really bit of a nerve-wracking time when I do these, because as you can see, a lot of time and energy and effort and work has already gone into all of these rounds, much to the dismay of our next door neighbours. So there you can see, although I'm not sure if it will actually show up very well on the camera because it's not antiqued yet, but hopefully when the antiquing process hits this, you'll really see those uh, numbers crack out of the silver. Uh, but I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna crack on with some of the others now. But you know, a lot of hard work and energy and effort's gone into these rounds. And when you're stamping a finished product like this, you get one chance. You just get one try. And of course, if you uh, mess it up, then <laughs> you're in a bit of trouble. You either end up with a piece that's uh, not perfect, or you end up with uh, having to remake them. And at this late stage, remaking these is not really an option because we've, of course, basically got them in pre-order at the moment. So if you are interested in them, there's a link down in the description below over to the Silver Forum, where you can find all of the information. Now this is going to be number number two. So we need to find number two. I have got, by the way, a rather handy homemade DIY sort of stamp holder, which is very useful, but it's only good if you actually put the stamps back in it after every time you've used them, which I sometimes don't do, which is a bit annoying. So these are in pre-order over on the Silver Forum, uh, links down in the description below. If you're interested in them, then please feel free to get in touch. The, uh, these are not gonna be listed on my website just yet because as I said, they're in the pre-order phase and uh, once we know how many are sold in pre-order, we can then put out any remaining pieces on our website. But for, as I've always said with all of my products, the simple best way of, or cheapest way of getting hold of these is to email me directly because anything that I list on the website 
has to account for silver for uh, has to account for uh, PayPal fees, which is always uh, a barrel of laughs. So. Yeah, basically, if you are interested in these, please feel free to email me. There are different price structures for different members of the Silver Forum, uh, different sort of paid membership levels. So if you are interested, uh, probably worth checking out that because you'll get um, some significant discounts on these. Now, I wanted to also talk a little bit today about some of uh, why we have not shown these being poured. So a lot of you have been asking about um, making of videos of these and some of the other silver form products, the three ounce rounds, for example. And uh, I did address this a little bit in the live stream I did last weekend, but basically life has been pretty busy and to find the time to sit down and plan and record and sort out all of these type of videos has been quite hard. So that is a, a, sort of an excuse that I really don't like, you know, everybody's busy in life, I know. But, you know, it is what it is. We just have been very, very busy and not really able to focus on uh, creating some of those bits of content. I would like to say that with this bit of a video here to show you some of the stamping of the serial numbers and the antiquing process that that hopefully will be rectified coming in the future. Because I know those are very popular videos and I know a lot of you like those uh, style of videos. So we will hopefully be bringing you more of those in the new year. Um, you know, from my perspective, life is starting to make a little bit more sense in terms of busyness levels. We've cut back on a few uh, different things outside of work that we've been doing. Just to focus on life and make sure that we're not overdoing ourselves and overdoing everything that we're trying to achieve in life so um yeah we we are on the uh, on sort of the upward trajectory in terms of going back to some of the roots of what we want to do here on the channel so this is now number four <clears throat> and um so i want to make that perfectly clear to people that there will be silver pouring compilation videos coming out in the new year we've got one silver pouring compilation video which i'm working on right now which is all about big chunky kilo bars. We've got five large kilo bars that we have not shown being made yet. So I will be showing those at some point, probably next weekend, I think at this rate, but um, it'll certainly be before Christmas anyway. And then going into the new year, brand new year, 2020 starts, and we will be uh, showcasing just our regular pours and various things. And of course the Silver Forum products will be coming back in 2020 with the one ounce Silver Forum rounds perhaps some other sizes and different designs. The European mint bars will be coming back as well. So lots to, uh, lots to look forward to for 2020 with regards hand poured silver. So we are cracking on with these. It's gonna be a pretty lengthy process. Normally what I would do actually is have sort of four or five, if I could fit them, rounds here on the table and I do each stamp that I can do. It's a little bit more time efficient, but because I am trying to work and double task, multitask here on camera, as well as, um, you see, I don't put my stamps back. This is a, a little bad habit I've got. So here we go, I'm putting them back and then I can find the right ones. Uh, because I'm trying to work and multitask here, I don't want to make any mistakes. So I'm trying to concentrate as hard as possible. So this is number five. And um, yeah, as I said, you don't want to make a mistake on these because a mistake and that's it. It's, well, not ruined, but it's less than perfect. And I always want to make sure things are as perfect as they can be, especially when you're making something as cool as these five ounce rounds. So that's basically a bit of the update and a bit of the silver stamping here. Of course, I've now got 20 left to do still. Uh, let's see the first five that we've done already. I'm going to speed up this uh, process and probably just jump to the next step, which is the antiquing. So I will see you all in a little bit. That's the first five we've done. You can't really see the, uh, the serial numbers coming out at the moment, but trust me, as soon as we hit them with the antiquing solution, things will just start to uh, to really kind of explode and showcase out from the backs of these rounds. So let's jump forward uh, to the antiquing process where we'll show all of these hopefully getting nice and uh, antiqued and finished. So they are all stamped now with their serial numbers and I'm happy to report there were no mistakes and the 
last part of this is both my least and most favourite part of the entire process, and that's the antiquing. Least favourite because it's smelly, it's dirty, uh, your hands get all black with the uh, silver polish and everything, it's not very pleasant at all. Uh, and uh, liver of sulphur is what we're using, so basically, if you don't know, liver of sulphur is uh, very smelly, it smells like rotten eggs. So having a little pot of it like this out, not very pleasant. Windows nice and open though, so uh, always using a well ventilated area. Now this is the antiqued one already, uh, but the lettering on the back here has not been antiqued, so I'm just going to pop that in the solution. It's really very simple and quick. You have uh, the solution here, and uh, you basically warm, you have warm water is the most important thing, and a little bit of the liver of sulphur, so it's kind of wee wee yellow colour is what I like to think. If there's anything deeper than that, you might end up with quite a deep patina, and that's one of the words here that you'll see on the back here, patina, and that basically means the uh, the blackening of all of these. Now you can already see very quickly uh, that these are starting to change colour a little bit. This is actually a fairly weak solution, and that's because I want to be able to uh, kind of pull them out at the right time as I'm watching them here live. It's probably not that easy for you to see on camera, but the lettering is starting to turn. You can see some of the colours on that one there. Now I'm only going to put three in at this time because, as I said, I want to make sure that each one doesn't have too thick a patina because when you come to polish it off it sometimes can uh, be a bit sticky if it's still on there. Now this one is already starting to change back to kind of a really dark colour, uh, which is fine. Uh, you know, if you're a new kind of silver pourer out there and you're worried about antiquing, I was very worried about it. You can see how that has really accentuated the serial number there. Uh, <clears throat> I was worried about antiquing at the start and thinking, oh gosh, what if I ruin my pieces? Uh, you know, this kind of discolorization is absolutely nothing. It will come off very easily with um, with some silver polish. So that's the next step after this. Uh, you can see they're all starting to turn a really nice golden kind of rainbow color there. And um, essentially what you're doing is speeding up the aging process. Now you can see that really kind of dark spot on the pickaxe there. Don't worry about that, that will come out quite happily. Now the second little pot of water that we've got here is uh, bicarbonate of soda and just plain tap water. And that will help slow and stop the reaction of the liver of sulphur with the silver when you dunk it in there. So uh, these are a fairly light patina. Uh, I'm maybe just gonna leave them another couple of seconds uh, maybe a minute or so, and then we'll transfer them into the water. Now you'll notice I'm wearing a glove here, that's not, I mean it's recommended I would say. Liver of sulphur is, um, it's not very nice stuff, uh, so make sure that you wear gloves and of course, as I said, have the windows open uh, and well ventilated area because it really is very pongy and uh, trust me, having felt this stuff on say a little bit of an open wound you know I bite my fingernails and there's a little bit of an open wound there it stings to high heaven not very pleasant at all so make sure if you do get it on your skin to wash it as soon as possible so those are now all looking pretty good to where I would like them they're all starting to get nice and rainbowed now I don't want them to become so you see on the side here this is not a problem but um, it's just something to be aware of he's got a really deep blue if you get a complete solid dark blue on all of your silver there you might struggle and find it a little bit more difficult to get the uh, patina off when you come to silver polish it at the other end. So these are now going to be dunked into the bicarb of soda water. Now it's important to remember that you are transferring some of the liver of sulphur solution into this pot here. So my advice is once you've dunked them in there and you're slowing the reaction down and stopping it is that uh, you take them out and you wash them again under clean water, a bit of soapy clean water and uh, then they'll all be stopped and the continuing uh, evolution of that sort of patina pattern won't come through. So that's what I'm just going to rush off to the sink and do now and then we'll come back and actually polish these three rounds. So the final step of these is to get them all polished and you can see some of the incredible colours coming out from that patina gel. I mean these are beautiful in their own right, don't get me wrong, but silver is meant to be all white and shiny. So we're going to transform these now back into uh, what they should look like, nice and shiny bits of silver. So to do that we're just using some silver polish foam here and uh, I find this works 
really well. I've been using it for, uh, well, since ever I've started with silver and uh, it's always done me very well. There are other brands available. We're not sponsored by Goddard's or anything. Uh, now, what I tend to do is I get a little bit of the silver polish onto my yellow duster cloth there and I'll basically just go roughly over and you can already see the difference. It's coming off quite easily. And that's the real important thing when you have a light patina gel uh, or a light coating of the patina gel. It's a really deep, dark tone, it will come off a lot less easy, you have to put a lot more elbow grease into it. I mean that's already looking pretty, well pretty pretty I have to say, look at that. Now once I've got a little bit of a coating of that silver polish on it, I just take a little piece of uh, foam, these I think are from some of the Queen's Beast um, boxes basically, and uh, maybe just a touch of silver polish goes onto the uh, actual foam bit itself. And then I find the most easy thing on certainly a piece like this, which has got lots of texturing, lots of bits that need some deep clean, is literally just to go over it with the, uh, the sponge. And I find that really does help get into all the nooks and crannies, because of course if you're just going you know, like this across this, it's not going to get into the pickaxe part, it's not going to pick up into all of the little grooves of the hammered part here as well. So I do find these uh, little sponges, there is actually a sponge that comes with these, uh, with these Goddard's um, pots of polish. Uh, I think my original one's long gone, but any other piece of sponge will do, it doesn't have to be anything in particular. Now with the uh, antiquing process there is one sort of small flaw is if you've got some nice sort of texturing on the sides of these pieces like you see here, uh, it will, the antiquing process will, let's see if we can get that to focus, the antiquing process will uh, colorize the internal parts of that and that's very difficult to kind of erase with the silver polish. Uh, not impossible but certainly pretty tricky so that's one of the downsides of these type of pieces and uh, antiquing them but I think it looks very cool nevertheless. Now with all of these, as you can see, it takes quite a little bit of time and elbow grease to go through each and every piece, making sure it's as pretty as it can be. I always like to try and go over the hallmark as many times as I can, because these are really nice, deep two mil hallmarks, uh, and they've got some incredible detail, and it's always nice to accentuate that with the antiquing process. And basically, rinse and repeat. Once we are nearly finished, on the reverse here, we can showcase the serial number and how that's come out. I'm really happy actually, it's really flying out of the back of these rounds. It's amazing the difference it makes actually with the antiquing process. And as I said earlier in the video, when I was uh, very first starting to try and antique stuff, I was really worried that I would uh, mess them up and I would, you know, ruin pieces and things, but actually it's been an absolute blessing to have these. So there you can see the difference you can really see those serial numbers screaming out from the back, which I'm really happy with. And that's what it looks like compared to a fresh one. So really stark differences. So now basically it's just, for me, a very long afternoon of sorting out all of these, antiquing them, polishing them. I'll probably put some telly on or some YouTube on in the background whilst I sit at my desk and work on these. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy process, but as I said, it's, my it's one of my least and most favourite parts of this entire manufacturing process of these and many other products because whilst it's quite time laborious and um, you know it's quite repetitive doing the same thing over and over, this is not so bad because you've got 25 pieces, but we have done runs of antique pieces of 50, 75 I think we did once as well, and that uh, <laughs> takes an awful long time. But it's so satisfying when they start to come up at the other end, you know, when you've got, when you've got like three or four to go and you've nearly finished the entire batch, it starts to come together and uh, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, that is my day for the rest of the day. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, an overview of how these Silver Forum rounds are at least finished. I know I haven't shown the whole process of them being poured. Uh, you know, I haven't really talked about that, but these rounds as you pour them are relatively easy to pour, uh, you know, they're just five ounces so you have to try and get that weight so we do the, you know, hand stop, uh, or like stop by eye uh, coordination kind of method. So there are going to be times, I think we poured something like 40 of these to get the right amount in the, in the right weight range. We did try and keep some of the ripples on them so that at least there would be some 
you know, texturing and rippling preserved in the uh, the pickaxe part of these. As you can see here, this is the next one. This is number number two has been finished. And um, yeah, so it, you know, there's a, a very lengthy process of these that we go through to create them. So it does take an awful long time, but I'm really proud of them. And I'd love to know your thoughts on these. So please feel free, even if you're not purchasing one to um, to keep for yourself, I'd still love to know your feedback on them. Uh, be interesting to see your thoughts on this process. If any of you out there are sort of silver pourers and you do similar things, are there any tips and hints that you've got for mass antiquing or mass polishing um, that you could lend us uh, a little bit of your wisdom? That's always nice to hear. Otherwise, if you are interested in these, I will say again, I said it earlier on, there's a link down in the description below to The Silver Forum, which is of course our long-term partner and sponsor here on the channel. And uh, proceeds from the sales of these rounds go towards The Silver Forum and keeping it uh, running, keeping it free and keeping it uh, as awesome a place as it is. It really is, I think, a fantastic resource for uh, certainly us Brits, but it's also evolving and growing to accommodate more US, Canada and foreign users too. So definitely worth checking out if you've not already done so. And as I said, if you want to support the forum, there's a link to all of these rounds, all of the information there. And in due course, we will be releasing these out on the website too. But for the very best prices, you want to get in touch via the Silver Forum as a paid member or just generally by email because we can cut out things like PayPal fees. So there are the three finished antique five ounce hammered Silver Forum rounds. The 22 left to go. My fingers are already getting stiff from all of this. Uh, all of this polishing and as you can see it's really dirty work you get uh, really dirty fingers and uh, I always hate filming immediately after doing these type of videos uh, because you get all of the comments people can go oh, clean your fingernails clean your fingers and it's you know when you work with your hands you get dirty fingers and things that's just part of life so there we have the three finished and all of the others that are going to be finished later today and uh, I will uh, probably at some point show a, uh, a couple of photos and videos on social media of all of these but in the meantime if you enjoyed today's video you know what to do put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media that would be very helpful for everything that we do otherwise thank you all for watching i hope you have a fantastic week ahead and as always please make sure that you like share comment and subscribe for more